Well, gentlemen, we're here today. We're going to talk about something off topic. So before I got into uh, the CB game and the radio game, I was into a whole nother other nightmare. And that other nightmare was called car audio. Now I currently still have, of you guys that know that watch the Tech 9 video, that I currently still have my SPL truck. It's dated, faded and dated, but it's still working. Well, that is powered by a Crown A6000 GTI, which is the largest amplifier ever made by man for car audio, period. Now, let me say this with a preface, because a lot of people are going to watch this video, a lot. First, let me say, I don't work on car stereo amplifiers, nor am I interested in getting into it, so please don't call me to work on your car stereo amp. I'll send you away. It's not what I do. But we're going to fix one because it's very special. The reason I can state, hands down, that that is the largest amplifier made for car audio is because it's the only one that you can listen to music on. Yes, there were some bigger ones. There was the War Horse, which is basically a switch. It basically creates like a 30 through 70 cycle hum, basically. For actual fidelity and power produced that you can listen to music on. To give you guys an idea of scale, I am six foot five. I am three, as filming this, I'm 330 pounds. This is the center plate for just the ID badge on this amplifier. Now the reason that I got to show you the ID badge is to give you guys an idea of scale. Okay. This is one of my <coughs> custom covers I have for one of my other two A6000s, and it's all polished. But gentlemen, this is the Crown A6000 GTI. Had a very nice young gentleman show up over here today. He found me through the YouTube channel here. He says, man, I need some help. I said, what? He knows I, I started out the whole conversation with me saying I don't work on car audio amplifiers because I don't. It's not that I don't know how, it's I don't want to. I'm perfectly happy working on my amplifier stuff for radio. He goes, but I got a Crown A6000 GTI and I was like, well, I'll make time for that. <laughs> this is the unicorn of all unicorn amplifiers. I have two of these. I have one in a crate directly from Crown that long story short I, I used to have a show truck I, I did the whole car audio scene and I had the one that I was using and then I had a backup I also had the very rare uh, uh, Crown A3000 A GTI which is literally like half this size to give you guys an idea of skill now I gotta be careful what I do with this because remember there's over 200 plus volts in the final section of this thing It's a big bitch. Okay, this is a big amplifier. Big. And the reason we have it all apart, because this nice, this nice kid Joseph, he bought this in a storage locker thing out of Nevada someplace, and it was a display piece in a car audio store. And it closed, and this was one of the pieces they threw in the storage unit, and he ended up buying the storage unit locker, and he was running it and he heard a loud pop and then it shut down. Well, he let it sit for a couple days and then he changed the fuse out on it. And by the way, the fuses, it 
It comes with an internal replacement fuse. This is the auxiliary one. Now in its day, this was phenomenal. It has an internal hard brake fuse that is ceramic at 400 amps. When this came out in the car audio industry, nobody, nobody's was doing anything like this. Nobody's. I can vouch for this because my good personal friend and the gentleman that lives right down the road from me, his name is Mark Young. He was the head product rep for, well, he was a product. I don't want to say head. That would, that'll upset some people. He was a product rep for JBL and, and Harmon Group. And he had left one of these at my car audio store here in town, which was at the time, and still is, Dick Stereo. Dick's used to be independently owned. Now it's owned by a company called Stereo King out of Seattle. Still a bunch of great guys. Everybody that was there when I was in the car audio scene, for the most part, still there. But at the time, they were the JBL dealer for Boise. That's not the case anymore. Um, that line has now gone on to another store. But they had one of these sitting in a display case. And I walked in, I bought a whole bunch of subs, I bought like 400 foot of gauge, and I said, I'll take that. And I pointed to this in the case. And they laughed and they said, oh yeah, we hear that about twice a week. I'm like, no, I'm serious, I wanna buy it, how much? Two, three, four thousand bucks, what? Tell me how much, I wanna buy it. Please note, when we go to run this, this is not the proper size power wire. This is just so we can turn it on. It's got four gauge hooked up to it, just so we can turn it on, anyhow. Long story short, to put this thing inside the cabinet, they had to dis they had to assemble the cabinet around it. And when I actually ended up buying my first A6000 GTI, first I had to get interviewed by the guy that owned it. His name is Mark Young. Mark, phenomenal friend of mine, been a presence in my life now for almost two decades. We formed a friendship based around this amplifier, this beautiful elegant, sexy, refined, monster, demon of an amplifier. There is not a subwoofer that has been built that can put up with the output power of this particular amplifier. It will destroy, it is a speaker destroyer. And if you think about it, at this power level, you can literally play the homage game and go up and down. You could probably hook up God knows how many speakers. It's rated for on paper, if you go watch Wilson Audio, Wilson Audio Labs or whatever it is, he does a dyno test on one of these things. It is retarded what this amplifier puts out. Sorry, not allowed to use that term anymore. It is disgusting what this thing puts out for power. And for the day and age that it was in, still nothing can kiss what this does as far as signal quality, and as far as fidelity, yes, this was built by Crown because Crown is owned by Harman and the Harman Group owns JBL. So they, they had a merging of the minds, I guess would be the best way to put it. <clears throat> now, there are some amps out there today that claim that they have the girth and the width and the penetrating depth that this thing has. And I argue no. You can literally weld with this. The output potential with this amplifier is something silly. Um, we did a promo video a long time ago on a galaxy far, far away where we took a CD and we burned it in our computer and it had 60 hertz. That's all it had was 60 hertz, the entire disc. It was like three and a half hours of 60 hertz noise. Pure 60 hertz sine wave. I slid it into the CD player. We had coming out of the power port, which is over here, a white lead, or pardon me, a white lead and the black lead. We had it running out the door of the truck, and we had a table saw set up with a carbide bit on it. And we started turning that volume up. Click, 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 click. And when I got up to about four, you could hear the table saw start going ting, 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 ting. When I got up to about 35, 40 on the head unit, the table saw is running full out. 
I don't remember the specific numbers. There was a time where I could have rattled all that off for you guys to enjoy, but I think this is 120 volts at 35 or 40 amps that this thing can produce. I had to do the math. I remember the number being 200 for some reason. It, at 125 volts, it's 200 watt or 200 amps and we got to assume the circuit isn't hundred percent efficient. So we'll say it's 95 to 90 percent efficient. So it's 180 to 190 amps at 120 volt output with a 60 hertz tone. But this thing has got a full crossover in it and you can actually play music to it and it sounds freaking amazing. Okay. So 200 amp, you can literally run your house off of this thing. The table saw wasn't presenting any load to it. We took a PPI amp, a Rockford amp, and an Orion amp, and there was a third one. I think it was like an Alpine amplifier and laid them down on the table saw and powered by the power of JBL, cut those other amplifiers in half. Of course, they were already blown. You know, somebody crowbarred the crap out of them and they, they were long blown up. So <clears throat> it was just, it was a fun little thing that we did way back when. I don't know how much circulation that got or where it ended up to. I think that some other people did the same kind of promo video like that at some point for them. It was fun. It was just a fun experiment. Anyhow, I got interviewed by Mark. We, some money exchanged hands at some point or another, and then we had to disassemble the whole display case and I got my very first crown. And I proceeded to mount it this way against the back wall of my pickup. So the amp mounted vertically and not horizontally flat. It made it four weeks and the toroid slipped and shorted out some shit and it was like a lightning explosion that went on on the inside of the box. I know it doesn't look like it, but we have it in reverse. Normally we'd start with the amp all together and strip it all the way down. Well, today I had to take it all the way apart just to figure out what we had to work with. The toroid slipped and it destroyed the whole amplifier. Well, I, if I'm not mistaken, that amplifier was a pre-pre-pre-production the one I ended up with, well, when I called and I got an RA, and I'm not going to drop any of the names of the people that I was dealing with then, but uh, I called and I got an RA and I drop shipped it back. Well, this is when I found out the guys, the engineers at Crown were a little bit tight. And let me explain to you what I mean by a little bit tight. They explained to me on the phone that for me to return this, it needed to come back in a wood crate. Well, at the time I'm, I'm working with a stereo shop, so guess what? MDF is my, my jam, man. We took off and we went in the back. We got out ourselves some quarter inch thick, whatever, whatever, and we started cutting stuff and we built ourselves a casket, a casket. We sent the thing back in a giant black casket. It was a straight up coffin. It even, I, dude, I went to Home Depot and I got piano hinge for it and it opened like a casket. We had eight gauge wire coming out of the sides of the boxes for handles. So you could have four people carry it. Now this box, this amp weighs about 80 something pounds, 88 pounds, I do believe. <clears throat> I remember spewing that number off a lot when I was a kid. It weighs probably 65 pounds without all the body armor on it, which are massive and big and they look like this. This is a piece of cast aluminum beautifulness. And I think Gary or one of the crazy bastards over there polished these way back when. This is extra body pieces I have from stuff you acquire over the years. We built a casket to put this thing in. We dyno matted the bottom for it to sit on and you hold this thing down with some giant ass bolts. I mean we're talking bolts, not drywall screws, we're talking bolts. So we bolt this thing inside this casket we go out and we get red, like crushed velour, you know, like felt or whatever, lining inside the casket with, of course, batting material behind it, pillowed it out in the whole nine yards. Same thing with the lid. Now, as a joke, this was a joke. I took a cigarette plug adapter and I took the negative and the positive wire and I hooked it up and then the shittiest RCA cables I could find plugged them in over here and literally cut them about two feet from the amplifier. 
So the cigarette plug adapter hanging out this side. And on the center of the body, I put a note for the Crown Engineers because they wanted to look at it and evaluate what failed. Okay. The note says, removed as installed. I have no clue why the amplifier failed. Please let me know with my phone number. So <clears throat> off to UPS we go, 300 plus dollars in shipping later. And this is in, oh, 2000s-ish, like 2002, 2003. Uh, the birth date on this one, by the way, is 2003. So off it goes. About two weeks later, I call because I never heard anything from them. So I'm not going to, once again, I'm not going to mention the name of the guy that called me back, but he called me back and he was an engineer. He goes, man, we got your amplifier here and we, um, we opened up the crate. Please note, we painted the casket black, by the way. And then like stenciled JBL rest in peace on the side. I mean, we did it up right. I mean, like we did it right. You know what I'm talking about? Even had the twist lock hinges on the sides. I mean, it was, I mean, it was perfect. Um, we opened your crate, sir, and um, please, please tell me that this is not how you had it professionally installed. Man, I about fell out my chair laughing. I was driving, man. I about fell over laughing because he was as serious as like a New York heart attack. I was like, oh my God, okay. These are not the kind of guys that I hang around with all day long. <clears throat> Remember, my entire social network at this time revolved around stereo guys, which, let's face it, are a bunch of, well, pot smoking, beer drinking, fried food eating, fun loving, you know, wet t-shirt contest having. I can't remember. No, I'm not, and no, I'm not talking about the installers. We're talking about their old ladies. But you get them drunk enough, I wouldn't put it past them to get a wet t-shirt contest going on between them. I digress. Moving on. I ended up getting another... Uh, 6,000 they just pulled it from the shelf and sent it to me I ended up purchasing another one so if I had a problem with the one I currently had because my entire system was based around this giant bastard um, I could pull it drop ship it off for repair and then I could drop another one in its place and nobody ever knew it never even told anybody it's like I'm not telling nobody shit <clears throat> I just wanted to make it so that I was never down little did I know going forward in the future that would pay off in the RF world um, the tow world, the gun world, everything else I've ever been involved in. One is none, two is one, and three is even better if it can be brought by another person. Back to Joseph, being the third person, bringing another one. He said that he was running this thing, and it was running great until it popped. And he heard a loud pop, and he goes, man, I looked all over this thing, and I cannot find what caused the noise. And he goes, I'm a little leery to power it up, but I'm more interested in seeing if it works so I can sell it. Now, he had a price in his mind, and I said, okay, that's a decent price. If it works. Well, we bring it over here, and we didn't power it up. We just I took all the cages on it. There's three layers of compartmentalization to this thing. There's a completely RF-shielded cage that goes around this amp section. And I am yet to determine in my mind if that's to keep the noise out or to keep the noise in. Because when I had this in my truck, <clears throat> which I still have, when you turn this I on, it creates so much electrical noise, RF-wise, that it'll wipe out the receive in your CB radio and your ham radio just from pure <coughs> noise. There's a certain amount of voltage. Once again, not allowed to use that word. There's some crazy amount of, and please forgive me, please forgive me. There's some crazy amount of RF switching that, or power switching that takes place here. Now, we're going to do a deep dive. I'm taking this on as a personal challenge. Okay. We're going to dive inside this amplifier like none of you guys have ever experienced before. We're going to go find, because I just happen to know all of these dudes. I made some phone calls already this evening. One of the really close dudes that I right down the street. I've got the connections to know the people that know the people that built this. Well, 
in my opinion, this is like the SR-71 of the stereo world. It really is. It's one of these things that just flies so high and so fast, and it's like Icarus. It touches the sun and then catches on fire and disappears. No one's going to go and hit this level. So we need to document that stuff before all those guys are lost to the wind and it can be out there forever. So we got over here and we started looking at it. And sure enough, the bane of every amplifier repair builder on the face of this earth is what? I have a friend of mine, and every day on Facebook, see, I, I don't repair car audio amplifiers because I know lots of people that do, but I got one friend of mine, his name's Kevin, and we're not going to say anything more about him. He is a brilliant young man. He's like me. He's just homeschool driven smart MF, right? Every day, he takes a picture of a little tiny piece of wire like this where some asshole installer, I mean home gamer, I mean wannabe, I, I mean home gamer, strips the jacket over their amplifiers, they're getting ready to install, oh man, I'm going to strip this back and I'm going to shove it in the speaker board. And then we've all seen everybody do it. They take their fingers and they twist it. And then all them little tiny angel pubes of wire fall off and fall directly into the carpet. Right into that speaker carpet. And ever, we've watched everybody else do it in the world. They go, one, two, three. And then they proceed to take the wire and shove it in the hole. So then the bass hits. And that stuff just floats around. Well, every day Kevin puts up some new picture of some sundown, some whatever, whatever, some DB, some, 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 and some, 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 or other. And he goes, daily reminder, boys. <clears throat> just your daily reminder. And it's a close stop, like if we were to take one of these circuit boards. Now, I gotta be careful where I stick my fingers because there's only 200 plus volts in this thing. Just remember, boys, don't strip the wire near your amplifier and then the whole boards burn up around that one wire I am not saying that this young man Joseph that came here today I think that this predates him based on the pieces of wire that I have picked out of this thing when he was here and post when he left the wire is very old very brittle and it's very cheap now I looked at what he's got going on in his truck one it's nickel coated wire and this kid's running all copper I don't think that he's the one that did this that caused this thing to fail but this amplifier has failed now he goes but it turned on well let me break it down for you oh and by the way when this thing starts it is a symphony of sound listen to this beautifulness ready telling you that this badass mofo is switching some serious high voltage underneath the hood. It does turn on. He said he was playing music with it, but he wasn't pushing it too hard, and I'm glad he didn't because he came this close to the sun like Icarus, but he didn't burn his pecker off. Now, I wanted to run this thing, and that's probably the last time I'm going to power this thing up for a while. Because from this point forward, it's coming apart. There are a couple different things that we want to do here. First, got to vacuum it. And i got to go over it very carefully with a little tiny brush everywhere. And as I'm vacuuming, i got to get... Okay. <clears throat> 
to catch any you don't want to blow air into this situation it's just going to cause more damage remember don't strip your wires near your amplifier if there is more wire floating around on the inside of this thing we are going to continue to have stuff fail well your first thing is well let's blow it out well then all you're doing is pushing the wire farther into the circuitry so we're going to give it a good snort before we go much further but I want to show you guys what failed first can you guys see it I just took a picture of it so I'll insert it here because I mean it's right there it's it's literally right in the middle of frame I mean, it's literally right here. Let me insert another picture. Right now, I'm saying to myself, oh my God, I can't believe I was this lucky. Because that one little wire could have kissed off this whole thing to make it where it's not even repairable. So, the main reason that this is here today and it's now mine is because little tiny wires floating around on the inside but this happened so hold on first off we have our primary side of our power supply so the 12 volt comes in goes through a bunch of switches basically high speed switches and it creates AC well we couple that through a transformer and these are our outputs this is our secondary so primary secondaries Okay, this is what drives our amplifier section. All the current, most of the current that is consumed by this thing is literally taking it and switching it into higher voltage DC. So we spit it out. It sucks in the DC voltage over here, goes through a bunch of switches, and then gets spit out in very layman's terms now, guys. Remember, we're not sitting here trying to tell everybody how to build this amp. We're trying to get everybody that doesn't watch this kind of stuff or understand this kind of stuff, giving them very general, very basic operating knowledge. We're not going to get too caught up on the specifics. So please, down in the doobly-doo, don't be sitting there trying to correct me on everything. I know. I've been there. I've done it. I got the t-shirt. Trying to make it for the average Joe so they can understand how this works. Goes through a bunch of switches, hence the reason the the total ring of 12 volt distribution, which is amazing to me, by the way. A 12 volt current comes in, goes through our fuse, goes to our distribution ring. Well, there's a positive and a negative distribution ring that takes place on the inside of this device. So we're going to create a little bit of AC. We're going to spit out a little bit of AC for the most part. But down here, a little wire came along one day and decided that it needed to be in the worst possible place that it could go directly onto that trace and it exploded it now it doesn't quite show it on camera but that's a two-sided via and as you can clearly see, this is what has happened. On the one trace, the one that's closest to the camera, this is our via pad and our wire is going down into the pass through via pad like this. There's about two via holes, three via holes worth of trace left that take off and run off to go there's a, a rectifier circuit that's right on the other side of this that then in turn spits the voltage and it goes this direction. It's, I know this amp. I've had this apart a couple times. This whole portion of the trace is completely missing. It has been welded and turned into slag and has disappeared into the amplifier. The tray or smoke, the trace that's behind it on this secondary pole going out on the backside back in there is also just as equally effed off. 
So <coughs> I look at this and go, yes, it powers up. But no, I wouldn't want to try and run anything heavy with this because yes, we're going to have shit explode. Most of that surface trace is gone. Now, it's like I explained to him, I would have a day and a half of taking this apart and a day and a half of putting it back together and we're looking at like maybe three to four hours worth of board work to repair that. Now, this is where we're going to stop because I got to pull all these pieces. I got to label everything and I got to set this aside. I've got too much going on right now for me to stop and work on this. But this is like, I, man, there's just no, it's just not in my vocabulary to, to describe where we stand. This, this thing is amazing. We're going to call all cars on this. I'm going to try and get um, a couple of my friends to show up on video and we can talk about it. Uh, Mr. Biggs, Mr. Dragon. I don't know. I don't think he's going to be too down for talking like this. It, he doesn't. When people call and ask him questions about this stuff, from what I understand, he just shuts them down and he's not even polite about it. He's like, dude, I don't work there anymore. Leave me alone. And I understand that. I have that happen quite a bit in my line of business. Hey, man, I got this amp that's by so-and-so. How do I run it? So we'll see. I need to get a new front or new power plate and a new front plate. This is so scary, it's not even funny to me. This is a magnetic interlock that they put on the output side of this thing. The magnetic interlock has been epoxied in place. This was epoxied on the lid, so when you put the lid down, it would keep you from electrocuting yourself because there is more than enough poop here to kill you deader than dead. I've got to source a couple other parts to get this repaired. And we will repair this. Believe me, this is not going to sit here just broken. Weirdest thing. This is the cage. The ferreted cage that they created for this thing. Now, and I got it on upside down at the moment. We know that this is an early series run amp because of these neon tubes. These neon tubes were very unique to the early runs. Now, somewhere in the middle of production, um, I know this because when I sent in my pre-pre-production to have it repaired, um, the one they sent me back with had a little LED, a 12 volt LED pack that sat here and another one that sat here and that was it. There's a huge 12 volt neon tube that sits here. The shame is, is this neon tube here is fried. So this is the 12 volt ballast per se, and this is a 12 volt ballast. So now what I got to go source out is I want to replace this back to the way it was. <clears throat> Me and an OG originalist, I want to put this back the way it was. What I think is weird is that this is on the outside of the cage when the two that I've ever seen, they were all on the inside of the cage. So it tells me somebody else has been in here for some reason or another. But I digress, it doesn't matter. This is what we got and we're working with it. So gentlemen, this is part one. This is the pre, pre, preamble to the whole story. We're gonna turn this into a series. I'm gonna show how we rip this apart and how we go about repairing it. And I guess I need to buy me some big ass freaking and you get like a thousand watt or a couple thousand watt one ohm resistors that I can series this sucker down and make it work. Okay, <laughs> let's go because I'm going to play. Gentlemen, I appreciate you all tuning in. Big shout out to Siglent, XS, Power, Coaxial Dynamics Bird. Maybe powered by Crown. We'll see. I'll see you. And thanks to my Patreons. Click, click, click.